America. My name is Armie Osei from Punk. I come to you live every Friday. Today I'm doing a special show. I'm going to knock out probably two of these, one right after another. I want to talk a little bit about the right to repair. It's a fascinating issue, and I just saw an interview by a guy named Louis Rossman, who seems like actually a kind of thoughtful and wonderful human being. He runs a repair shop out of New York, and... The right to repair is just this idea that when you buy something, you should be able to repair it when it breaks down. You shouldn't be under the sway of some sort of like having to go to the uh, the manufacturer and get their official repair person. You should be able to go to a third party and re repair it and then use it, right? Because sometimes the manufacturers goose you and you don't want to be under the tyranny of John Deere when you want to repair your tractor. I say this because I uh, was at an event about two summers ago when we had events and an event in Chicago and my buddy and I ran into uh, a, a buddy who works for John Deere in, as a GPS technician. He's a computer programmer and it turns out a lot of tractors are, you know, like, <laughs> like have NASA equipment in them. There, there's something special. And he says like one of the issues they have with farmers is that farmers resent the fact that they open up the hood of their tractor and it looks like a, you know, a space shuttle. And it used to be the case that their grandparents like actually fixed what they had or, or could go to a shop and fix it or buy parts. Um, but now everything's proprietary and there's a chip involved. And so you got to get this technician and then just kind of you don't get to shop around. You have to do what the technician tells you to do and pay what the technician tells you to pay. And so you're not in control of your livelihood anymore. John Deere is. You're under the tyranny of John Deere. And I use the word tyranny not as an accident, but understanding that this is one of the reasons we got away from the uh, uh, King George, right? Uh, we didn't want to be drafted into his wars. We, didn't, we wanted to be able to make our plans and then govern ourselves and not be under the sway of some other power who's alien from our influence, right? So we didn't want King George deciding taxation. We didn't want King George um, uh, hauling us off to try courts. And this is and the the modern tyranny comes from private industry and are de dependent on like kind of corporate guidance for how we structure our life. I want to be able to plan my life without worrying about um, uh, being under the undue influence of you know Tim Cook <laughs> deciding that my phone is going to to, to uh, break uh, with a planned obsolescence or or John Deere deciding that I must use their part. Right, so what these companies will do is that they will source from other manufacturers, but then make those other manufacturers um, assign exclusive agreements, so that third party can't say like, "Well, I just need this one fan um, from this one factory, so can I just order the fan?" But the factory won't sell that third party the fan because they have an exclusive agreement with Apple or John Deere or Caterpillar or whatever. Right, so uh, the right to repair means I should be able to I should be able to fix my own stuff. But to fix my own stuff, I'm gonna need design schematics, uh, you know, parts, uh, you know, a list of parts and stuff like that. So I'm gonna need you for everything that you sell me to also d like include design schematics and like general schematics and 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 parts and and like lists and and all of that, or have that stuff available. This was easier when there were fewer parts. But now we're starting to talk about intellectual property. The companies will say, well, I don't want to give you your design schematics. I don't want to give you the, the, the parts I use because that's my intellectual property. There's a way in which that's a good and a bad argument insofar as, if, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 so some people, uh, Rossman, initially, when in the interview I saw him, he couched uh, the right to repair as a property right. But it's actually not a property right. And, I, and if, he seems like a really good guy. So go ahead and forward this to him uh, because it's actually important to get this uh, clear. A property right's going to be um, uh, people actually laying off your ownership claim. You get the, the ability to um, um, like kind of imbue your will into some external object, and everyone else will recognize that external object as yours. So they will lay off of it. That is a property right. What you're talking about is a civil right. You want them to actually, you want them to accommodate you in some way. Um, uh, you want them to actually cede their property and accommodate you in some sort of way. So that's actually like a business transaction. That's a civil right. Um, so when you start talking about you want, you want Apple to accommodate you by giving you a list of parts or design schematics or a general, um, or like change the way they do business 
to allow you to repair. You're talking about a civil right, right? In market-based civil society, you're talking about your rights as a civilian, not as a property owner. Um, so I, I actually think it's, this is important because when they'll talk about their intellectual property and how they don't have to give it up to you, they might actually have a better argument for it insofar as it's a property right. Now, insofar as it's a civil right, you have the better, the right, the people under the right to repair have the better argument because your business shouldn't depend on, uh, you know, Apple. I mean, you, sh- you, you, you got to buy a phone to do your business, but your business sh- shouldn't depend on um, their repair um, uh, guidelines, right? You should be able to repair yourself, sustain itself by your own wits. Right, so the idea that a farmer now has to depend on John Deere, um, like the tyranny of John Deere. What if John Deere just wants to goose him? Like they can't do anything about it. They're already like these tractors cost as much as nice houses. So you're already pot committed. You can't just um, trade out because now there are transaction fees. Um, you can't just go from John Deere to Caterpillar because now like there are transaction fees like like at this kind of scale. So you're 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 damned to them, but you shouldn't be unilaterally decided. Like, it shouldn't be unilaterally decided that you pay what they want you to pay for the repair. Rather, you should be able to go to a third party and, and or fix it yourself through your own wits. Um, and that's a civil right because, like, you're, the way you individualize yourself as a civilian, as a farmer, as a, you know, YouTube teacher um, depends on the equipment working, right? So we've met, we, we have machines we use machines to kind of fashion our civil identities. And insofar as our identities depend on them, we need to be able to sustain them and our identities and and have some sort of control over how we sustain them insofar as they sustain us, right? So it's a civil right that like, insofar as I, I have the right to be, you know, a YouTube personality, um, I should have a right to, you know, do the equipment, <laughs> to fix the equipment that allows me to be a YouTube personality, right? So civil society, it's a, it's a different sphere of rights, but we need to start talking about um, different spheres of rights because not every right is a property right, and that's good because, you know, political rights aren't property rights. No, they're how we decide how we order society in order to allow for different spheres of rights. Like that does it's not going to reduce solely to a property right. Now it does it's going to include property rights as an enabling condition. For example, I need to own my body and own the words out of my mouth so that you know that when I speak, I speak for myself and not for the person, not for my owner. Right? So you need property rights in order to get some to some of these higher level rights, but the higher level rights cannot be reduced to property rights. So the right to repair isn't really a property right because it'll actually, I think, uh counter be countermanded by more um like direct property rights, especially the intellectual property of whoever is uh, selling you the good. But it, it can and should be considered a civil right insofar as I need this to run my business, to, rea- to realize myself in civil society as you know, a farmer, right? And my identity should not be dependent on or, or disproportionately dependent upon um, you know, Tim Cook or uh, Red Apple or John Deere uh, the CEO of John Deere trying to goose me for, or Tesla. I mean, so it's going to just depend. Um, it should, I should have some sort of say on what I do to sustain my stuff that I need, nonetheless need. Right? So, um, yeah, should be able to go to a third party and, you know, <laughs> get the battery fixed on my laptop without having to go to Apple and get it fixed by their person because what if they decide to to uh, to uh, to you know, this like what if I get hooked into Apple because you know one of those things with Apple is I'm, this is all PC what you see uh, one of those things with Apple is that once they get you with one device all the devices kind of talk to each other but they don't really talk as well with other things so they kind of metastasize and you you end, you end up with Apple houses. And, and what if Tim Cook decides just to squeeze a little bit more money out of you? You can't just change your whole house. Um, so uh, the right to repair, I think, is actually appropriate. I like expanding the notion of rights because these are freedom, and, and we have an underdeveloped conception of freedom. And, and so I support the movement. I think we should couch it as a civil right, not necessarily a property right. 
um, a civil right because it's tied to your civil identity and your civil identity depends on this, these machines and your expressions and your self-determination as a civilian, like through your stuff, um, through the functioning of your stuff, right? So when it was just property, right, you're not talking about its functioning. You're not talking about sustaining its function and, and forcing people to help you sustain its function. Uh, you're just talking about people laying off of it and recognizing it as yours. Apple can recognize your broken computer as yours without actually handing over design schematics and, you know, a list of parts, right? So it's not, you're talking about a civil right. You're talking about for me to actually, uh, like, build my life in any sort of stable way that's um, controlled by me, I need to know how generally the stuff upon which I build my life works. Or I can just make my life so small that I only can depend on things that like, I happen to know how to do, which is, or know how to make, which is kind of an inappropriate, um, inappropriately small expanse of freedom, right? So think of the right to repair as a civil right, not a property right. Property rights just other people recognizing that your will is imbued in this external object. The civil right means how we, uh, uh, a system of mutual accommodation usually in a market-based society, in a market-based way in which indiv individuals kind of um, determine themselves as what they are in a way that's um, uh, mutually sustains a whole where other individuals also um, um, uh, determine who they are. And this is different from even a civilian. I mean, not a civilian, a citizen. Now, the right as a citizen is to the right to come together as equals and decide how we all are going to govern the society and set down the rules so that all of these inter, um, interlocking spheres of freedom um, can kind of harmonize and be modified to account and accommodate each other, right? So then you're gonna have, you know, you're gonna have rights as spouses, you're gonna have rights as uh, as uh, civilians, and you're gonna have rights as citizens. They're gonna be shaped differently, but if you and you're gonna have rights as owners, property rights. But if you just kind of try to reduce everything to property rights then um, you lose a lot. You're going to lose the right to repair. You're also going to lose the right to self-governance because it's not obvious that self-governance can come, uh, should be a sphere of property right or it can be reduced to property right. You can have property rights in a, in a, without having a democracy. You can have property rights without having democracy. Actually, a lot, of, a lot of the uses of property rights are going to be markedly anti-democratic. So if you think everything reduces to property rights, self-government becomes a, I mean... Hobbes, <laughs> uh, you know, he wanted a monarchy. Um, so it's not obvious. So there are going to be other spheres of freedom. And in general, freedom is going to be the ability to make plans and enact them. But you have other people who also have other plans. So just the different ways we work with each other to emancipate ourselves from nature and work with each other to realize um, what we want to be, what we aspire to be, to make plans and then realize them. And how do we accommodate each other and sustain each other in that? Um, property rights are only one way. All right, thank you for your time. Um, right to repair good. Think of it as a civil rights. It's good to actually make robust the civil rights discourse. I need this to run my business. I need this to be the kind of individual, the kind of civilian that I want to be. Um, and it shouldn't be dependent on some other person's tyranny. It's very American. But, I, but that means I not only need them to lay off of it, I need them to actually accommodate me in, you know, giving over the d d d design, somatic, schematics, and, and diagnostic equipment. Or make that available for me to purchase. Um, yeah. Thanks for your time. I'll see you next time. I'm going to do another one on the child tax credit. Talk about a different kind of right.